In episode 157 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we'll get into your inner voice. Are you sabotaging your health and fitness journey? The show notes for this episode can be found at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 157. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. October is Gratitude Month at 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. At 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group, you can join the conversation on Facebook. So today I wanted to talk about inner voice. And I want to start with a basic question. Is your inner voice a nice person? Our inner voice is a very powerful thing. It drives our mood and feelings. And it can determine whether we are going to be successful or not. And so if you're really trying to build something from a health and fitness perspective, you need your inner voice to be an inner cheerleader. You need them on your side. So I want to talk, take just a minute, And let's talk about your inner voice, but I want to do a little exercise with you. So you might want to get a piece of paper and pen because I think it's going to be worth writing down some things as we go through this this little audit of your inner voice to help you understand who this individual is that's kind of coaching you along in life and to figure out what we can do if we need to do anything about them at all. They might be awesome, but let's find out. So the first question I want you to think about is I want you to think about health and fitness, particularly your health and fitness. How would you describe that? What words come to mind? So take just a minute and write those words down. Okay, now, if I asked you what were your health and fitness expectations for maybe one year, and then three years, and then 10 years, how do you see yourself in those time frames? What, what are the words that are coming out as far as your vision of who you will be at that point in time. Me personally, I'll be 60 years old when I, 10 years from now. So the question I would have in my mind is, what do I envision for myself when I'm 60 years old? What words are there? And then the final exercise I want to do is, if you've made a mistake recently, maybe you um, had some foods you didn't have on your eating plan, maybe you ate more than you were supposed to, maybe you skipped a couple workouts, what, what is your tendency? What happens when that happens in here? What, the, what is your inner voice telling you that you're, you, you feel at that point in time? Do you feel like that's just a momentary setback and you're able to just charge on? Or do you really at that point feel like quitting? Is your inner voice telling you, oh, it's no use? So now take that paper where you've kind of written down these words and now ask yourself this. Are those the same words you would have answering those same questions or talking to someone else that you love? Would you talk to someone else using those same words if they missed a workout and slipped up? Would you use those same words to explain what you expect for them one, three, maybe 10 years from now? And then when you think about, you know, your current state, if you were thinking about their current state, would you use those same words or would you use different words? And why? And, you know, the core of this really kind of comes down to mindset. It really is about self-love. Now, the cool thing about mindset is it's actually something we can change. But to change something, you have to first recognize what the current state is. Now, I just happened to be reading a book lately, and that's kind of maybe what, I mean, it wasn't what brought up this topic, because this topic was kind of on my list to do for quite some time. But I happened to pull up the book Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, by Carol S. Dweck, and she's a PhD. And that book is really more about success in education. It's not so much about health and fitness. In fact, she doesn't even discuss health and fitness in there. But I think a lot of the principles of what she's kind of getting at in that book are applicable to us. So in the book, basically what she's surmised is, from her studies, from her work, is that there are two different mindsets, okay? And there's the fixed mindset, And there's the growth mindset. Now, there are different paradigms, different parallels across here. So you might be thinking in terms of intelligent, you might be thinking in terms of emotional skills, or you might be thinking in terms, in my case, of fitness. 
But the gross thing works that it works out like this is to say, do you believe that people can become more intelligent over time? And there's certain people that believe, no, we have a fixed set intelligence that we're granted, and then we can measure that on a uh, an IQ test, and that's it. That's our that's our cap. This is my IQ and it's going to stay there forever. Kind of the same thing with emotions and relationships. If someone is always in a, in a situation where they're creating bad scenes, drama queen, or a, a different terms you would use for individuals that are, that are a problem, that are relationship challenged, are they always going to be that way? And another way to kind of look at it would be in relationships, is a cheater always a cheater? Or can they change their colors? A fixed person believes across those different paradigms that People don't change. Intelligence doesn't change. So they think of things in terms of fixed. You have a fixed capacity to do things. Now, the growth mindset believes that people can change. They believe that you can change and improve your intelligence if you're willing to work on it. They believe you can change your personality and become a better person if you work at it. And the fundamental difference between these two sets of people is that the people with a fixed mindset are not going to like to fail because failure means that that fixed number that they have, that fixed level of intelligence is lower than they would like for people to think it, that that they would like people to know it is. So they want people to think highly of them and they get a lot out of what other people are thinking and saying about them. Whereas a, a growth mindset is someone who's not afraid to fail because they see that failure as an opportunity to learn what not to do. And again, because they believe they can always rebound off of this, they have that more uplifting, I can improve on this now that I know how to not do it. So where would you put yourself? Are you more of the fixed, I think things are stagnant, this is the way they are? Or are you more of the growth mindset to say, I know I can improve on things if I put the effort out there to do it. And you may be in different camps slightly across the different paradigms here, because I very much do believe that there is an upward limit to our intelligence. We can read and learn and do some things. So I think there's probably some upward limit to what we can do, along with the same thing as do people change? Again, I think there has to be kind of a big, big thing in our lives. They have to really, really push it to truly get to that fundamental change in those things. So, but I do believe it's possible. I believe it's possible across all paradigms to some extent. It's just in my mind, it's a question of how much. So I probably fit a little bit more in the middle of those two. I'm not necessarily fully growth that everything's going to work out. I'm a little bit, I guess I would say, a realist in that sense that I know that there are limits to what we can overall accomplish, but there's always opportunities for, for improvement. And you know, I've said that with regards to health and fitness. As long as you can draw a breath, there's an opportunity for you to improve your health and fitness. You just have to put the effort. So how do we change our inner voice? And early on, I told you, I think the first step is awareness. So we've kind of done this little audit exercise, and now we've kind of talked about our general mindset. And I I hope what you can see is kind of the parallels in those two situations of if you have this mean inner voice that's not your best friend, that's not in love with you, and you have a fixed mindset, you got a little bit of an uphill battle to get out of this. You're going to have to change your mindset and then start working on that inner voice to get that inner voice where you need it to be. And you have to believe that you can change that inner voice. Because if you don't believe you can change the inner voice, you're right. And so you have to believe you can change your inner voice and you have to want to change your inner voice. And then you're going to have to make the effort to change your inner voice. So we have this awareness now, having done this quick little audit. And I would encourage you to redo this audit over time to see where you are, because we can we can start building that growth mindset and then we can regress a little bit. So it's going to be a constant awareness of what you're thinking and kind of being mindful of the fact that we can shift back and forth a little bit if we're not careful. So making sure that you have that regular positive reinforcement of where you are and where you're going is definitely going to help you. Okay. I think the next thing that you're going to want to do, and this is just me personally, and I and I heard this concept from someone. And initially when I heard it, I thought this is a little counterintuitive until you really kind of drill down into the meat of it. But I know you've probably heard about positive mantras. And that's where you'd sit there and say, I am strong. I am powerful. I am capable of anything. That's all good and fine. And, and I think that's still extremely valuable 
for you to keep those positive thoughts going because positivity does help you build on the principle that you're moving forward, you're progressing, and that's going to help. But because occasionally there's going to be stumbles and because occasionally we're going to have problems, we need something maybe a little bit more powerful than just this mantra. And the way I would like to state it, that's not exactly how the way they they put it when I heard this concept, but it's a proof-based mantra. And so instead of just saying something is for the sake of saying it is, say something is going to happen because of particular evidence that you have. So an example would be, I know I'm going to be healthier tomorrow because I went for a walk today. I know I'm going to be more fit tomorrow because I went to the gym today. I know I'm going to be healthier tomorrow because of the food, quality food I ate today. So you can see how the difference is now I've I've provided particular evidence in place to say that I'm building towards something better because of the effort that I put in. And that's a fundamental difference between just putting a mantra out there as I will be healthier tomorrow I'm putting the evidence out there and saying, I know I'm going to be healthier tomorrow because I did these things. So the the proof-based mantra is a good way for you to start making sure that you're reinforcing that inner voice that you want to have because you're effectively proving to your inner voice that there's a reason to care. And then when you slip, there's a huge opportunity there for you to kind of look back and say, "You you know, I had a bad day, but... I've had 15 great days, and one bad day is not going to negate 15 good days unless I let it be a bad day number two and a bad day number three or a bad day week. You know, if I let it go, now the negatives will start to compound and beat out my positives. So early on in my slip, I've got that positive mantra. I may have slipped today, but I know I'm going to be healthier tomorrow because I've had 15 days ahead where I've been very good. So again, not beating yourself up over a little slip because you know you've put in all this great effort in the past. Another exercise that I think is extremely valuable is gratitude. And, you know, we're going to celebrate all of October on the Facebook group at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group. And if you'll join that group each day, I'll be posting a thread for us all to post our gratitudes. And if you start posting and paying attention to the things that are good in your life. Your your inner voice is going to start understanding that there's a lot of good there. So if something's not working, if you're not seeing the results that you want in a certain way, well, but there's so many other good things going on in your life that you can be thankful for. And it kind of, again, it's that positive reinforcement of, of where you can start telling your inner self how you really feel about all the good things that you're doing. Because, you know, they say if, if someone screws up, a business screws up, a person that gets messed up with a business is going to tell 10 of their friends or hundreds now on Facebook and all, hundreds if not thousands of their friends. Whereas if someone does good customer service or does their job, they're, they're seldom recognized. And that's just a cognitive way of we deal with things is we happen to just really kind of sometimes overemphasize the negative and underemphasize the positive. So this this daily gratitude is an exercise that will get you into the practice of saying, hey, there's a lot of good in my life. What I would encourage you to do when you're posting this is to sit there then, and if you start having a bad day, go back to the post that you did the previous few days and kind of ruminate about what those good things were and how they're still there. And just making that one mistake or having that one bad day does not negate the great week you just had, okay? And then kind of keeping that balance. And then I think the other thing is, instead of thinking about what happened, just get back on it. So yeah, maybe maybe you went out and you had a few too many drinks. Well, okay, before you go to bed, hit a little bit of water, get yourself ready for the morning, Get your sneakers out, get your shorts out, get your t-shirt out and put them by the door and just get out and go for a 15 minute walk. Get right back on it the next morning. Yeah, no, you might not feel like it because of what you've done and you might be a little frustrated and unhappy with yourself, but just the act of 
getting back into what you were doing. Even if, again, it's not as what you were doing, but it's just, I'm, I got up, went for a 15-minute walk, okay? That is that positive step in the right direction. You went past thinking about it and got onto an action that was going to show you tangible benefits. And so, again, all of this stuff is very, very important. And I say stuff because I think, a lot of times people will kind of look at mindset and think, well, it's not a big deal. But if you really go back and do that audit the way we did it, and you really think about the words you're using, and then the next time you get frustrated, think about the words that are coming out of your head. And if you realize that you're having a negative mindset, if you, your inner voice is not in love with you, and they're not treating you like they love you, then it's time for you to kind of do that little reboot. It's time for you to sit back and say, hey, Okay, I'm in control of me. I have a growth mindset. I have an opportunity to improve myself, but I have to act. I have to put the effort in to benefit, to grow. And if you'll do that each and every time, it will get easier and easier and easier. If you make the gratitude a part of everyday life, if you make those positive proof-based mantras a part of your life, you're going to be in such a better place mentally that there's nothing that can help you, I mean, nothing that will keep you from reaching the goals that you set for yourself. So again, really do think about your inner voice. Really do get connected with what that is. Get mindful about the things you might be doing to sabotage your own health and fitness. And that's going to get one huge, huge obstacle out of your way. And I promise you, if you'll do this on a regular basis and you'll keep up with this, it's going to be easier than ever for you to get healthy and fit. So again, I do hope you'll join us on uh, the Gratitude Month at, in October at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group. That's our closed Facebook group. But again, I, I let people in straight away, just trying to keep the spammers and the scammers out. But the core of it is this. This group is there for you. It's for you to have a dialogue with like-minded people. And October is going to rock because everybody, I hope, will be contributing to and sharing their gratitude for the day. And I just think it's going to be this huge positive momentum that's going to drive us into the end of the year to make us better tomorrow. Thank you for being here. I do hope you'll join us for Gratitude Month at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet with David Knox to discuss his book, Body School. Until then, have a happy and healthy day.